G'day everybody, welcome to today's video. Um, so what I'll be doing today is just showing you how to install PFSense on one of these WatchGuard Firebox uh, XTM5 series units. Now the stuff you'll need is, so to start with you'll need the 4 gig, well it doesn't have to be 4 gig, it can be something like a gigabyte which is fine, uh, just a CF card. Now this is what you'll be in, uh, putting the USB thumb drive image on. Um, now the reason you want to use a CF card, you can install the embedded, but I have had a few problems with it with the newer version of PearSense, so I've cho chosen to go, go down this route. Um, so you'll need to get a CF card, CF card reader and cable, obviously, um, unless your computer's got a built-in card reader. Um, a hard drive, well, you can use a hard drive or you can use a solid state drive. Um, I'd only recommend using a solid state drive if you're doing, if you're, if you're not doing the web cache, because um, constant writes to a solid state drive uh, tend to upset them a little bit. And finally, you'll need a console cable and either a USB to serial adapter or a computer with serial. Alright, so that's that's the basics. So yeah, you just need the um, memory stick image from pfsense.org. Um, obviously, you'll want to select the um, yeah, when you go through the options, uh, you'll you'll see um, VGA and console. You'll select the console image because these WatchGuard Fireboxes don't have any VGA ports on them. So you will need that, and that's why we need the console cable and the serial adapter. Right, so I'll just flick to my computer and I'll show you the process of burning the uh, USB image to the uh, flash, flash card. Alright, welcome back. Uh, sorry if the audio is a little crap. Um, I just had to quickly switch to a headset. Anywho, alright, so to obtain the memory stick uh, image file you'll go to the pfsense.org forward slash download right. and the type you want to do is install architecture because the WatchGuard XTM 510 uh, is 64-bit I'm selecting 64-bit for this now you'll want the memory stick installer and you'll need to select whether it's VGA or serial um, if you, of course, if you're installing it on a WatchGuard box, you will want serial because they have no video output. Choose your download location, and that will, um, yeah. In my case, I'll use Singapore. Download. Simple as that. I'm sure you've all downloaded a file before. All right. Now, because I already have it downloaded, I'm going to cancel that. Right. And here is my downloaded image. So what you'll essentially want to do is you'll need Win32 Disk Imager. So you run that as administrator. Accept the UAC prompt. And now. So it's just a matter of navigating to your file. So here. Clicking open. Um, you'll select your source. In this case it's already detecting that the L drive is the compact flash card. Uh, which I can show you. Well, see, it's showing that it's populated, all these others are greyed out. So that's the compact flash card. Now, I'm not actually going to burn it because I've already got it burnt to this card. Actually, what the heck, it's not going to take too long. Alright. And we just go right, it's going to go, do you want to erase all the data? Yes. Then it will go ahead and burn it. So we'll wait for this for a few moments and then we will be back. Alright, so we're nearing completion, there we are, we're done, cool. So all we need to do is exit the application now, um, and we will eject the media, cool. So now it's safe to remove the compact flash card, and I'll pull it out of there because I don't actually need that anymore. Alright, so now that you've got your compact flash card uh, burnt, 
we will go back to the handheld iPhone video. <laughs> All right, back to handheld. So you want to take the three screws out. There's one there, uh, one there, and one at the very end right there. So it's just a matter of sliding that back, lifting that off. Cool. Now you'll already see my current configuration. I've got, because I've already got PFSense installed on this. Uh, for this demonstration, I'm putting it on a different hard drive. Um, now you'll want to insert your CF card. Now I've just lost it. No, there it is. Stop looking, I found it. Alright. Oh, there's a big gooby hand in the way. Oh, sorry. Get in there, you bastard. Right. Cool. So that's the CF card installed. Right. Unfortunately. Actually, no, we don't. Hang on. Hold, hold that thought. All right. So I've got the temporary hard drive installed. Uh, once again, this is only for demonstration purposes. I actually have my fully built PFSense system on that 500 gig WD black there which I may purchase like a 60 gig solid state drive for or something because um, yeah I won't be doing any of the proxy caching and stuff like that so um, yeah um, so yeah once again just that CF card in there now I've plugged in the console cable and that runs all the way bloody up here to the front of the computer um, so yeah I will jump back to the computer now and uh, we will well actually I've got to get a power cord first because I'm that unprepared um, so yeah, I'll, we'll jump back to the computer in a moment, and I will show you how to uh, set it up. I'll be back. Alright, so we're back at the computer now. So you'll notice uh, both these things I've got up on screen, one being the device manager and one being putty. Alright, so what we want to look for in device manager, just in case you don't know what your COM port is, you can look for ports under COM and LPT. So if you expand that, now you'll see here in brackets COM5 that is our COM port if you're using a USB uh, serial adapter so we'll just change that to COM5 in PuTTY and now let me just remember this it's 115200 pretty sure that's the serial speed and then you can actually go down here and turn flow control off alright so I will push open and I'll fire this up. Sorry, it might be a bit loud for a wee bit. All I'm doing is getting bombarded with air in the face. Alright, it's worked. So, one thing you will have to worry about is you will have to make sure that your hard drive is blank. Otherwise, it may try and boot off the hard drive. Um, I'm not sure whether I mentioned it before, but the only way to get PFSense on here is either to put it on that compact flash card, because these watch guard boxes will not let you boot from USB um, with the locked BIOS. So you will have to make sure that um, yeah, you're either installing it on a CF card, or yeah, you're stall installing it on the hard you're putting the image to the hard drive and then maybe installing it to the CF card. This, The way I'm doing it is using the CF card as the install media and then writing it to the hard drive. Alright, so we want to select I here for install. It's If you've ever done a, a standard VGA install, it's basically the same. Right, so I'll just remove the console cable off of my keyboard. Alright, so what we'll do is we'll go accept these settings, quick easy install, blah blah blah. It's basically it's using the defaults. Now, it doesn't even ask me which hard drive I want to store it to because it knows it's got the one there that it's like, oh yes, I can write to that, cool, we'll use that. And plus it's the embedded image, so it will be a little bit different to the standard install that you'd install from the likes of a CD. So we'll just wait for this process to do its thing. It's usually pretty quick writing to a hard drive. Um, it's not too, not too bad at all. So we'll be back once this is done.
here we will select just the uh, yeah we'll select that one the, uh, actually I can't remember which one I did I think I used embedded Alright, so that looks like it's successfully installed. We shall hit the reboot button. Now one thing you will want to do is just quickly catch it before it shuts off completely. Um, as you'll need to take the compact flash card out. So we'll just wait for this to spin up. There we go, right, no, stop. Alright, so we'll just slide that compact flash card out. At this point you can go ahead and mount your hard drive and all that kind of jazz, if you haven't done so already. We'll close that, fire it back up. Now we should see it boot off the hard drive. Or reset terminal. It'll take just a couple of seconds to figure out what it's doing. There we go. Auto booting. And once you've basically done this, it's just a uh, it's just a matter of setting up PFSense like you normally would. Uh, configure your interfaces. Um, if you don't want to do it through the console, you can configure it via the web interface, I believe. Um, because on this particular one, the XTM510 series, um, I believe it's EM1, which will be on the front of the unit itself. Oops, I better not do that because it's got a hard drive in it floating around. Um, EM1 should be port number 2 on the gigabit ports. That should have DHCP and the default IP address on it. Uh, I don't know whether you heard it just then or it just beeped. Yeah, so as you can see in the terminal, um, you'll see the LAN there, EM, EM1. That's got the default IP address of 192.168.1.1 and that has DHCP on it so you can plug your programming laptop or just any laptop slash computer into it and be good to go then you just log in with uh, admin and then the password as pfsense and you're in like Flynn um, it'll walk you through the setup guide um, of yeah configuring it through the web interface and you'll be right as rain anyway that's how to install pfsense on a watchguard firebox using the hard drive method um, yeah, any questions, just leave them down in the comments, and uh, yeah, best of luck, and thank you for watching, cheers.